Good afternoon. Today is July 2nd, 2019, and we're here today to talk to you about civic engagement and voting. About 243 years ago today, on July 2nd, 1776, the Declaration of Independence of our great United States of America was signed. And one of the great traditions of the United States of America is democracy and voting, a, a tradition that it seems like people are participating in less and less over time as, because as of the last presidential election in 2016, only about 51% of people actually turned out to vote. And during the midterms last year, um, only about 49% of people turned out to vote in those elections. Now, I kind of wanted to know what, why were people doing this? Why, why don't people turn out to vote more? And what do they feel about democracy? And so I assembled this small group over here here to uh, go out to go ask people on the streets of Burlington about why, why this was the case. And so uh, my name is Ian, and uh, I'd like to introduce the other members of this group. Hey, Sherry. This is Sherry over here. And uh, Sherry, why are you part of this group? Uh, I was concerned that um, I didn't know enough information about the government, so I kind of wanted to find out if anyone else was in the same boat. Yeah, that kind of seems like my target demographic here. And uh, this is Linda, right? Yes. Yes, Linda, why'd you join this group? I joined this group because my concern is about the transportation system in Vermont and why the political parties have not done anything about it yet. Yeah, do you ride the bus? I do. Okay, Sometimes. yeah, so that's a big concern in the lives of people like you. People rely on that system and you want to find out why, you know, why people don't seem to be care, the people in charge don't seem to care too much about it. Yes. All right, and you are? Sophia. Sophia, yes. So, Sophia, why, why did you join this group? I joined this group because I wanted to learn about the voting system around how people with disabilities can be included. All right, well, you came to the right place. So, um... Yeah, so while we were out there in the street, what did you guys learn from this? Um, I learned that there was a lot more people out there not voting. I thought I was kind of a small percentage, but after doing research and talking to people on the street, I realized there's many, many reasons why people don't vote. So even though it may not be the same reason I'm not voting, um, there's just a large percent of people not voting, and that's... I think why a lot of people are really unhappy with the things that are going on. Um, they don't realize that there's massive amounts of people that aren't getting their voice heard. Yeah, and uh, Linda, would you say something similar yourself? Yes, because when we went out talking to people, everybody has almost the same response that they've been voting in the past and nothing has been done. So they are not sure if they're going to vote again, but they will try. So they all want the government to do something about enhancing the problems of the community or in Vermonters. Yeah, and uh, Sophia, how about you? Um, I would agree that people, some people don't vote completely, but the young people have started voting more. Yeah, I'd say I'd learned something quite similar myself. Um, you know, when we were out there interviewing people, I was quite surprised to, uh, you know, hear from people who basically said that they don't believe that their vote matters at all, and that's why they've just stopped. So, and part of that is uh, because of our two-party system. We have two dominant parties in, in this country, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, and people feel like they only have two options to actually, um, you know, to actually pick from in this in this country, although there are primary elections where you do get to pick the final two nominees for each party. And uh, so do you, do you guys vote in primary elections? Um, I don't because, um, well, I didn't. I, um, because I didn't know enough about what was going on, really, and about the candidates. So one of the things I've, I'm trying to figure out more is locally, um, what people do in each of their positions and um, and just learn more about local stuff and um, I also realized that it's not just the presidential elections that really w matter it's all the people you 
vote in under the president that gets you to the president. So um, I think people misunderstand the importance of their local um, elections, and I'm one of them, and now I'm going to look into it a lot more, um, what's going on locally, and um, I think we'll be represented 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 it. <laughs> it's all right much better if um, more of us did vote and look into our local government all right sherry what did you think linda hey linda sorry so for voting i am planning to vote next year so with all this information gathered and things that are going on i'm ready to vote next year and i'm going to look at into the promises of uh, the politicians and see which one really wants to do what I believe in, so I will vote for that person. All right, and Sophia? Uh, I usually vote for the presidential election because I feel I know more about it than the primary. All right, um, do you vote in any other elections besides the presidential election? No, just presidential. Okay, that's, that's all right. Um, so is there anything else that we've learned from uh, going out and talking to you know, the everyday people of Burlington? Um, well, a lot of the people that we spoke to were actually from out of state. <laughs> and, yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't know that Vermont would be a place that would get so many tourists, but it turns out I, people actually kind of uh, have heard of us and want to visit us, so that was a surprise for me. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I learned that Vermont is a very peaceful place. And from the most of the people we interviewed that came inside, they were strangers. They are coming from other states to stay maybe for f one week or two, spend the holiday with their families. They were not uh, necessarily here. And they were also complaining that it's expensive. So, and those are the things we are going to talk about to see how the politicians can help to resolve those problems. Yeah, how about you, Sophia? Oh. I agree with um, Linda. Yeah. Well, if what you've that's that's quite all right. If what you've if you believe what you wanted to say has already been said. So um, anyway, from uh, going out and talking to the people and learning about the voting habits of others and all these other offices that, besides the president that that are out there that you can vote for, uh, do you plan to change your voting habits for the of future elections? Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. It's convinced me that I really needed to, I need to get more involved and um, just stop being one of those people that just complains about everything and really doesn't figure out what is the problem and get to the bottom of it myself and vote for every single position I can possibly vote for. Yeah. Linda, what about you? I strongly believe I should participate to vote because if I continue to complain and say this is what I want done and I'm not part of it, my vote counts. If I vote, then it will be helpful. I'm probably going to start trying to vote in the primary election other than the presidential. Yeah, that does sound good. And, um, you know, just keep in mind that primary elections aren't just for the president of the United States. You know, primary elections oftentimes determine the nominees for basically every office it, in America, including, the, you know, the, your congressmen federally, your senators, and your state legislatures as well, leaders as well. So, um, you know, it's important to get out there and uh, pick from the big pool of candidates first before you get down to the the final two who are going to go head to head on election day and um you know i, I kind of hope i myself i kind of hope to uh start going out in more midterm elections i was too young to vote in the last presidential election and uh that that's definitely something that i plan to do come 2020 and um yeah so anyway speaking of voting um you know we, we're all here because of uh, a few different political issues. Uh, Linda here, for example, she's uh, one of her main political motivations is, uh, as we were discussing earlier, she relies on public transportation to get around, you know, which includes our bus system. And anyone who's ever ridden the bus system uh, up here in the Burlington area, you know, it's not really the best. It's kind of atrocious. There's not too the lines don't really go the places you need them to go. Uh, the buses are wildly off schedule. Sometimes they just 
randomly go out of service for no reason, which can be quite inconvenient if you've been waiting at a bus stop for 20 minutes or e even longer in some cases. So, uh, Linda, what what kind, what does motivate you to uh, does that motivate you to vote? And what do you think? What issues do you have with the public transportation system? So I have been living here for a while and I see that the transportation system has not really changed. And if you have to go to in, in the, inside the other cities in Vermont, the buses comes in some of them one hour intervals to pick up the, the commuters. And that used to take a longer time. Sometimes uh, there was a time I saw like maybe a pregnant woman standing at the bus stop waiting with another child and yeah she has to wait for like one hour before the bus comes so i'm just like saying the buses we have that are running in the city is very long very big buses and because the city is getting like a bit populated so if they can make it uh something faster like smaller buses that stops uh, they they can also create the bus stop new i mean extra bus stops where you don't have to walk for too long before you get to get into the bus to take you to where you are going to because um i think it's a big uh, kind of delay for also um my concern is that some people that there are some workers somewhere the mothers especially they have their kids they have to drop them off in school if they don't have car. So if they have some buses that are taking people from one place to the other very closely and the time interval is short, it will help them. It will, they won't be stressed out because stress leads to so many things. They can be frustrated, they can uh, be depressed. And then when they get sick, they go to the hospital. So it's a chain of problems. So if that one is addressed, the mother that is dropping the child in the school will be able to relax and then get to work, maybe when she gets to work, she's late, and then she'll be, um, I mean, the, 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 at work, she's late, and she's gonna be in trouble. But if there is something that makes her to be faster than what she did, like the buses thing, the duration, so that one can also help. And also, it's also uh, for the students going to school as well, Sometimes I see my maybe students, they're standing at the bus stop and they want to get to their destination. Or if you have to wake up early in the morning, you can sleep. But because you want to catch up with the bus very early and at certain time, you can't sleep very well, you are worried. So all those things are my really big concern about the bus, the transportation system within um, Vermont. I have experienced myself. I packed my bus my car and I entered the bus and I went somewhere and I waited for four good hours. At a bus stop? Yes. Wow. And when I waited there, the buses come, but they will pass. Why did they pass? Because there was nobody at the bus stop, but I was standing there, but I have to look for a shade. So if the bus get to, buses get to the bus stop, they should start, stop maybe like five, at least five minutes for somebody that is, leaving their spots to go and hang out somewhere to come before they move. So I felt if I, I was in that situation and I was thinking of other people that have experienced things like that, but it's not everybody that will complain. Some would have been used to it, but if they make it a little bit um, improve, if there is improvement, it will help a lot. So. Yeah. I mean, I've heard some better experiences from our neighbors to the north where, um, you know, I think that would address your um, your main problem with the wait times and people just leave, you know, the bus is just leaving without wait, seeing mm -hmm. if anyone's at the stop, you know. I know that in Montreal, the buses will always stop at the designated stop, wait like 10, 20, 30 seconds, FX. something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, if no one comes minutes. along, they'll, uh, they'll just drive they'll drive right by, you know, it's not much time, but it's certainly better than what we got. And also uh, your other issue was um, timeliness. Right? Yeah, it so just... like you said, if they wait, that one has maybe waited for 10 minutes, another 10 minutes, somebody else should come. So there shouldn't be that gap, that gap is too long. Yeah. And it's sickening, it makes somebody, you know, it can be depressing. 
it can be frustrating. It can lead to your health issues, especially like I still say mothers, like a mother, your car can break down and you're like, oh, let me jump into the bus. But you will never get the bus because it's going to be take you like one hour before you get to another bus. Yeah. It's the smaller buses. Maybe yeah, the smaller buses. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it definitely, uh, you know, take it how long it takes for it the buses to actually go through their routes and go through the stops, you know, mm -hmm. that is a definite issue. Um, you know, I'm not someone who has to rely on public transportation anymore. I got a car in uh, November, but you, I can still see um, the problems of the transportation system because coming here to the TV studio today, you know, I went to Google Maps to uh, get directions here from my home. Mm -hmm. It said it would take about 18 minutes for me to drive here, but if I wanted to go on th through public transportation, it would take about 46. So oh see, that, <laughs> that's it. That's <laughs> about Holy a God. little more than double the, uh, the travel time. So that really does show you just the problems with public transportation in this town. Now, um, at least one of the few uh, positives about the public transportation system here is that it is accessible to the disabled. And speaking of yeah. which, uh, Sophia, um, you're, one of the issues that you're motivated by is, uh, you know, disability access to uh, not not just uh, transportation and other public areas of life, but private areas such as work and school and stuff like that. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Um, well, I think that some people that are like disabled don't get enough help with certain things that they should be getting help for. And I think if people could like help out and possibly like help them out a little bit more than others, then it would be pretty much better off. Yeah, is there any way that you can think of that people can start? You know, because oh. oftentimes it's not, um, you know, it's not that people are ignorant and purposely gain, you know, dissing on the disabled, it's that they just don't know how to help. So is there any way that you can uh, tell the public about how to help these people? Like if you like see someone that's probably disabled needing help, like on buses also, some people won't move for disabled people. Definitely. Do you think there's a role in government for that? Um, I'd say so. Okay. And uh, yeah, and speaking of government, uh, Sherry, uh, you've certainly learned a lot about um, voting and being informed. Do you think there's any way that you can uh, stay informed and go out and, other than going out and vote more? Um, well, in doing this project, I've learned just scratch the surface of the like the whole nation and it's patterns and everything uh, as far as voting, who votes, who's registered and who doesn't vote even though they're registered um, and all that. But um, it's taken me a while to get the information on our local stuff. I, ha I find that I'm having to go to a lot of different places um, on the internet to get information and I've been working on it for a couple of weeks now and it just seems like I still haven't gotten to the bottom of, you know, who are our, our um, you know, counselors and, you know, all the little, all the um, different departments of Burlington. I, I still haven't really figured that out yet. I'm still working on that. And once I know all the different positions there are, then I got to work from there, you know, when they get elected, what they do and uh, such. So it's kind of still a work in progress. <laughs> All right. Well, still learning. Uh, well, it's a set, lot. Well, you've taken the first steps, and that's what's important. So yeah. I, I wish you luck with your research. And okay. um, yeah, so we're here today. That was our discussion on democracy. And um, about 253 years ago today, they, the founding fathers of this nation declared independence from Britain because they had this crazy idea that maybe the people should be able to either rule themselves or pick the people that they want to rule them instead of having to listen to the guy who just so happens to be descended from someone who just ha happened to have the biggest army a few hundred or thousand years ago. And that's what we gained when we broke away fr from Great Britain. And, uh, you know, it's important to, for us as Americans to realize that we have this privilege that not a lot of other countries in the world often have, and that's the ability to go out there, learn about the people who want to be our leaders, and then choose them ourselves. And so, in conclusion, I think that it's important to, uh, you know, go out there, go and research the, uh, the candidates in primary elections, in midterm elections, in every election for 
almost any elected office that you can think of. And it's important to make your voice heard and go out and vote on whatever day it is you need to uh, go elect these people. Just remember that at, as we go into the 2020 campaign season, which kicked off last week with the Democrat prim uh, debates and uh, primary season is next year. And uh, go get ready, Vermont. All right, that's it.